Hi guys and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So a few months ago I showed you a really cool open source project which added a VHF transceiver to any Android device. Now at the time of making that video you pretty much had to get the PCBs ordered yourself and assemble the hardware. Well now you can order a ready made kit already assembled and ready to go. Not only does this kit come pre-assembled with a nice protective case, it's also version two, which is a highly professional redesign by Mark Smith with a ham call sign N6MTS. Telegance, who we all know from those awesome and cost-effective JNC radio antennas, are now selling this version two kit for around 70 US dollars. The kit comes with a fully built PCB, which includes the SARF module and the ESP module already soldered and fitted to the board. So this kit is literally plug and play. The board looks very different to the 1.7B version boards that we showed in the last video. And this version two board has a couple of neat new features. Firstly, and something which I have not tested or read any documentation on, is that there appears to be a header on the board for a NeoPixel. Now I'll have to investigate this further to see what it's for. There are also a couple of buttons related to the ESP module, one for the reset and one for program. In normal operation, you would not need to use these, however, as the module will come pre-programmed. And if it isn't, then the ESP gets programmed when you first run the KV4P HT application on your Android device. On the top end of the PCB, you may have noticed two shoulder buttons. If you insert the PCB into the included 3D printed case, which of course protects the bare PCB, you'll notice a new addition to this version 2 board, and that's a hardware PTT button. Of course, you can still PTT within the KV4P Android app, but this also allows you to press an actual hardware PTT as well. Now, when you press that PTT on the side of the case, you'll see the application does go into transmit mode. This will still use the microphone that's on the Android device. The KV4P HT app is available on the Google Play Store as a free download. And at the time of making this video, there is still no iOS version. Now to change frequency, simply tap the frequency at the top of the screen and then type the desired frequency into the pop-up keyboard. Below the main frequency display at the top, you'll notice some other frequencies. Now these are memories that I've just already programmed in. Now these are extremely easy to add if you want to add memories. To store a repeater, you can simply enter in the repeater's output frequency at the top, then press the plus button, which is to the right of that PTT button. Here you can now enter a memory name, and if it's a repeater, then why not name it as the repeater's official call sign? Now repeaters will use an offset, which you can set here. Most modern repeaters also now use CTCSS to access them. And you can also set a CTCSS for the memory channel within the app here. Now under the advanced options, you can also change the offset, which is the split between transmit and receive for the repeater that you're programming. Now most VHF repeaters use 600 kilohertz offset, at least here in the UK, but you can change it if you need to. Now at this point, you could just press the save button, but you can also assign a memory channel into a group. For example, you could place all of the repeater memories into a group called repeaters and then simplex gateways into a group called gateways. The choice is yours. Recalling a memory is also super simple. It's just a case of scrolling to the one that you want and then tapping on the screen. You may also notice at the bottom of the screen, there's two tabs. Now we've been in the voice tab so far, but if you tap the APRS chat tab, you'll be presented with this screen. Now this allows you to send APRS messages to other users of APRS or packet. You can also beacon your position, and if your transmission is picked up by an internet enabled eye gate, your location will then be shown on a map via a website like APRS.fi. The APRS chat window does include reception of all APRS packets when tuned to the APRS frequency. As this application is open source, it would not be too hard to fully implement APRS features, like showing the position for the received APRS station on a map, 
and then just have a POS chat window purely for messages without all of the other telemetry information. Now the settings cog at the top of the screen will show this screen where you can enter your call sign for use with APRS. Squelch setting, module type, audio filters and accessibility settings can also be found here. So you can tailor the app for your needs. This is M0 um, DQW testing, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Mike 0 Delta Quebec Whiskey testing. Now that was the audio transmitted from the KV4P module and received using a local STR in my shack. Of course, the quality of the transmitted audio will depend a lot upon the quality of the microphone you have in your Android device. Although most modern Android devices nowadays do have great quality performance. Well, there you go, guys. If you saw my last videos on this, but did not want to build it yourself, then this version two, which you can purchase directly from Chelligance as a ready built plug and play product, may be just for you. Now, I'll leave a link directly to this product in the video description. Until the next video, take care yourselves. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.